This is the new BMW 5 Series, and it is quite literally the dirtiest car in the world. No, it really is. It's because I haven't been able to wash it. All the car washes are shut because of COVID. I mean, I live in a flat, so I can't get a jet wash to it. Sorry about that. It's ironic, really, because this version of the 5 Series is actually cleaner than its predecessor because BMW has updated it with mild hybrid technology. Now, in this video, I'm going to talk you through that and the other changes they've made to this car. We'll find out if it's better than an Audi A6 or a Mercedes E-Class. BMW has also introduced an M550i version in the UK with a 4.4 litre twin turbo V8. And I'm gonna launch it to time it from naught to 60 to see if you really do need to spend the extra for the full fat M5. I'm Matt Watson and you're watching CarWow. Buying a new car? Then head to CarWow and my team will help you find your next car at a fair price. CarWow, your one-stop car buying comparison site. Let's start the video by talking about the price. The new 5 Series range kicks off from around £39,000 and that'll get you an entry level 520i. If you want this M550i, you're talking around £70,000, which is quite a lot of money. Though it's still quite a lot cheaper than an M5, which is around £100,000. And anyway, you can save an average of £7,000 off a new 5 Series through CarWow. Now, if you want to see how much money you can save off one of these, I've put a little link just in the top right corner of the screen. It should be popping out now. If you want to do that, you can click it, take you straight there. If you just want to do that after the video, you can simply Google Help Me Car Wow and my team and I will help you choose the right car for you and get it for a fair price from one of our trusted dealers. I'm going to talk you through the design changes BMW has made to this 5 Series as part of this midlife update. So you've got some new LED tail lights, look very smart, some new bumper designs. This being the M550i, you get an even more aggressive bumper than the normal cars and look, you've even got a diffuser. It's fake, that diffuser. At least the exhausts aren't fake. BMW keeping it real with real exhaust pipes, not like you'll find on an Audi A6 or even Mercedes E-Class. Moving down the side, they're giving the car some new alloy wheel designs, ranging from 17 inches, which are gonna to be too small, to these 20s. The rest of the car down the side is the same as before. It's quite a conservative looking thing, this 5 Series. The only thing that breaks it up really is this air vent here. It's not fake either, it's real. It does smooth airflow down the side of the car. At the front, you've got some new bumper designs and you get a different bumper depending on if you have the SE model, the M Sport or this M550i, which is the most aggressive. Big change here at the front is the fact the grille's got wider. Be thankful they haven't gone full crazy BMW grille like they have done on the very latest cars, but it is definitely wider. And they've got some new headlights which are pushed further out and around the side of the car. And as a result, this car is definitely more of a goat. And I'm not talking about greatest of all time. I'm talking about goat. You know, eyes on the side of its head. <laughs> anyway, let's, let's check out the interior. What has changed in here? Changes in here are minimal. The biggest one is this. You now have a 12 inch infotainment screen rather than the 10 inches you used to have before. Extra two inches is definitely welcome. It's a nice big screen, very, very crisp graphics, responsive. The iDrive infotainment system's good. It's easy to navigate. You can touch screen it. You can use a swivel wheel, the shortcut buttons, the touchpad, gesture controls. Yeah, I love a bit of gesture control personally. You've got voice commands. Now, I don't use any of this actually because now BMWs give you Android Auto, not just Apple CarPlay, and you can connect your phone wirelessly as well, both Apple CarPlay and Android Auto. You don't have to have wires, which is brilliant. And I just use Android Auto and Google Maps to navigate around, even though the BMW just controls. Yeah. Anyway, <laughs> even though the BMW satellite navigation system with live traffic updates is very good. Now, some of the changes in here are some new trims. Nice. And yeah, really, that's about it. Oh, some new seats. And that really is it. That's your lot. Speaking of the seats, the seating position in this car is very good. Oh, and finally, they're giving you lumbar support as standard. Oh, I love the fact that the steering column is electrical. That's good, feels premium. And beyond it, digital dials. Now standard across the five series range. I always say this, they're not my favorite digital dials. They're just a bit dark. And I don't like the way the rev counter goes backwards, but they're okay and they can display a little bit of information, not as much as you get on the screen of an Audi A6, for example. The interior quality is good, very good actually. BMWs just feel solid. They really do. More solid than a Mercedes E-Class and an Audi A6 on the inside. I just don't think the design is quite as interesting. It's a bit like the exterior. It's a touch conservative. The interior design of the ES is more interesting. And if you want to find out a little bit more about that car, I've just put a little link, which will be popping out in the top right hand corner of the screen. If you click on that, you can go check it out. I've also put a link below the video if you want to just do it that way instead. If not, stay with me. We'll continue because we're going to talk about cubby spaces. They're all right in this car. 
Got some storage under there with the USB-C input. Underneath here are your cup holders. Uh, yep. 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 No, that's not going to fit. I don't know why I'm even trying, but it will fit in the door bin. Big practical door bins. Being a BMW, you always get these little extra storage areas here, which are lined with felt, so that whatever you put in there, such as your keys, do not rattle about when you're driving. If I can shut it. As for the glove box, once again lined with felt, and it's just an average size. But overall, the storage in here is pretty decent. In fact, this car is well thought out. Everything's laid out, dead simple to use. So you just got traditional knobs for the climate control, which is good, though there are touch sensitive buttons for the fan and the heated seats. But they look kind of cool, don't they? The way they're lit up, and then when you turn the car off, they disappear. And you've got the shortcut buttons there for the infotainment system and the stereo and stuff like that. Overall, this is a good quality, well thought out, comfortable cabin. See what it's like in the back seats. Driver's seat is in my usual driving position. Knee room's good. Headroom, decent, look at that. Slight complaint is foot space. Not the actual footwell itself. It's just a bit hard to really stretch out into the chair in front. If you need to carry three people in the back at once, one slight problem is this. The big hump in the floor, which you have to straddle, and then you're starting to fight for foot space and headroom in the middle isn't great and it's made worse on this particular car I've got here. It's got the optional sunroof and that reduces the headspace ever so slightly because of the mechanism for the roof. Really, if you need to carry three people in the back of your large luxury car, you're gonna be better off with an Audi A6. Now, if you wanna find out some more information and watch my video review of the Audi A6, I'll put a little link which will be popping out in the top right corner of the screen. You can click on that if you wanna go check it out or put a link in the description of this video. Anyhow, let's continue with this car. So, practicality wise, expensive feeling. Airplane star folders on the seat backs. You've also got, look at this, oh, where's the bottle? Out, see, <laughs> just whacked my head off that. that bloody sunroof. Door bins in the back are large. I like this feature. So you've got an armrest, that's good, but you've got the cup holders which are hidden until you need them. So you're not ending up putting your arm in them like you are in lots of other cars. They kind of look like eyes as well. You need to carry longer items than two people in the back at once. <laughs> Got some through loading there. I don't know why I'm laughing at that. <laughs> if you need to carry a child seat in the back, you've got flip up Isofix anchor point covers, so you're not going to lose them like you do the flip off versions. And there's plenty of space back here, so it's quite easy to install even a big, bulky rear facing seat. And you don't have to really move this front passenger seat forward that much to fit it in here. Overall, pretty practical in the back. And look, you can get it with four zone climate control if you want to. That's standard on this M550i version, though you can get it optional on lesser cars. To finish off here, look, we've got a couple of USB-C charging points and a 12 volt socket so everybody can charge their mobile devices. Thank goodness. Let's go to the boot. So the official capacity is 530 litres, which is exactly the same as an Audi A6 and 10 litres less than a Mercedes E-Class. doesn't really matter. Now, the opening is quite wide, which is good for loading things. And the low lip isn't particularly big, so that's good for hoiking things out. You can actually fit eight of these airplane size carry-on luggage cases in the boot of this car, which is fairly decent. In terms of other features, you've got a little storage area there, netty area there. There's a hook here you can hang your takeaway bag off so that your food doesn't spill all over your boot when you drive home. Some tie-down points there if you need to secure some larger items. And if you need to carry something really big, look, you can fold down the rear seats by pulling on these levers. Though annoyingly, that feature is a £400 option. And that brings you on to five annoying things about the BMW 5 Series. Speaking of having to pay extra for stuff, the adaptive cruise control with lane keeping assist, that's a £5,000 option on this car. You get it standard on a Toyota Corolla. This M550i has a glorious V8 engine. It sounds nice on the outside. Have a listen to this. Oh yeah. Thing is though, on the inside, BMW feels the need to play fake engine sounds to the car's speakers, and that just sounds artificial. Depending where the sun is, it can reflect off this silver trim on the steering wheel, and you get this flickering effect, which just distracts you when you're driving. The plug-in hybrid's boot has 120 litres less space because of all the batteries, which means it won't be quite roomy enough to sleep in. The wireless charging pad isn't big enough for the very latest big phones, such as my Samsung Galaxy S20 Ultra. Look, it won't quite fit in there. No, 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 it's not charging because it's not close enough to the pad. Brilliant. It's not all negative though. Here's five good things about this car. The Parking Assistant Plus gives you a wonderful 
3D view of the car. Look, you can look all the way around it like that. Isn't that brilliant and very clever? Makes it dead easy to park. Also, this thing works like a dash cam, so it's constantly recording what's going on. And if you have an accident, it will save the footage of the incident. Then you can use it in a court of law. You can get the car with BMW's latest frickin' laser lights. With frickin' laser beams! So they can shine up to 600 metres at the road, and they're absolutely brilliant, and they'll do that thing with a blank out part of their beam. So they don't dazzle oncoming drivers, though it looks like I've automatically blanked out part of their beams by getting the car so dirty. Let me see what they look like. There we go. Come on. Clean that up a bit. Let there be light! M Sport cars get upgraded M brakes. They also get lowered stiffened suspension. You can upgrade to lowered stiffened adaptive suspension. Now this M550i gets that as standard and a limited slip rear differential for better corner exiting traction. You get certain versions of the 5 Series with rear wheel steering, so that'll turn the back wheels in the same direction as the front wheels when you're going quickly to aid high speed stability, or in the opposite direction when you're going slowly improve low speed maneuverability. You can also get active anti-roll bars. They use special motors to counteract the twisting force on the roll bar when you go around the corner to help make the car stay as flat as possible. Look, this car has it and it just won't lean. Lean. I don't know what I'm doing. If you've got the all singing, all dancing, fully automatic cruise control system, it works with the car's navigation system and you can tell when there's a lane change and it will safely change your lane so that you don't accidentally filter off down the wrong exit. One of the major changes to this new 5 Series is that it gets mild hybrid technology. So you have a little electric starter motor that can provide an 11 horsepower boost, so a bit more responsive when you overtake, and it does help save fuel. The range kicks off with the 520i. That has a 2-litre turbocharged petrol engine with 184 horsepower. Then there's the 520d, which has a 2-litre diesel engine with 190 horsepower. Then there's the 530D, which has a three litre 600 diesel engine with 286 horsepower. Then there's the plug-in hybrid, starting with the 530E. That has a two litre turbocharged petrol engine and an electric motor and a combined 292 horsepower. Then there's the 545E, which has a three litre straight six petrol engine with an electric motor and a combined 394 horsepower. And finally, we come to this engine, 4.4 litre twin turbo V8 with 530 horsepower and 750 newton metres of torque. Now, all five series are either rear wheel drive or all wheel drive, and they all get an eight speed automatic gearbox. Okay, let's see how quick this car can go from naught to 60 miles an hour. Got my specialist timing gear here. Put it into sports mode for the gearbox, sport handling mode for the traction, sport mode, everything else. Launch control active. Come on. What are you going to do? Oh, struggling on the change there. Whoa! -hoo! We got it. 3.84 seconds. When it was changing from first to second, it lost a bit of traction as well. Could have probably gone quicker. BMW says this car did 0 to 16 in 3.8 seconds, so pretty much bang on the money then. Finally time to take this BMW 5 Series for a drive. And let's start off with what it's like in town. Now the first thing you notice is that it's got quite a bit of a blind spot, which is a bit annoying then when I was pulling out round a truck. It's really big, that blind spot. Other than that, the visibility is pretty good in this car. What's really good in this car though, is the automatic gearbox. It's just so smooth and so relaxing when you're just pottering round town. One thing that's more of a problem, is the turning circle. Is there many roundabout? Can I make it all the way round and back again? Ah. This car has the rear wheel steering, which is helping me a little bit by reducing the turning circle, but even then it's still quite boat-like. <laughs> but then it's the same for this car's competitors, really, if I'm brutally honest. Problem you're gonna have with a big saloon car when driving around town. One thing they are good at though, is dealing with bumps in the road. This car is actually fitted with the adaptive M Sport suspension, and I reckon you should get that fitted to this car if you buy one. The entry level suspension is just normal comfort. Then you have M Sport, which is lower and stiffer. However, that's a bit uncomfy over bumps. The M Sport adaptive though has a comfort mode, so it just slackens off the damper, so it's just better over bumps. That said though, it's still not quite as comfy over bumps as an Audi A6. But in town overall, this is, this is good. Right, let's see what this BMW 5 Series is like on the motorway. So this car has the fully automatic cruise control with lane keeping assist, and it's so easy to engage. I just press this button here, and we are good. <laughs> In some cars, you're faffing around behind the steering wheel for some extra lever. This is simple as, and it does that thing where it'll keep you a safe distance from the car in front by using radar control, and you can alter that distance by pressing these buttons. 
all very, very simple. And it's one of the best systems at just hooking you up to the center of the lane and keeping things nice and relaxed. It just does all the driving for you. I'm gonna show you this though, the responsiveness of this car's gearbox. I'm gonna throw it from 50. See that kick down, oh, my God. <laughs> the gearbox, boom, kick down straight away. And it doesn't matter which version you have of this car. This eight-speed automatic gearbox is very responsive. But when you combine it with this 4.4-litre twin-turbo V8, you go from pretty much naught to warp speeds in the blink of an eye. It is insane. There's a price to pay for this big engine, though. It's the economy. So you know, I'm averaging just under 24 miles per gallon. If you get the 520D, you're going to be able to do easily over 40 miles per gallon and probably over 50 as well. Now, when you are just cruising on the motorway, it's very relaxing, this car. Really, really is. If I'm being really pernickety, I could say it's not as quiet as a Mercedes E-Class. Just doesn't have quite as good sound insulation, but it's just a minor, minor difference. However, if you'd like to find out a little bit more about the E-Class and what I think about it in other areas, you can watch my in-depth video review of it. And to do that, you just click on that pop-out banner up there. I'll put it there for you if you want to just go check that out now. If not, Stick with me and we'll go check this fire series out on a twisty road. Okay, let's put the car into sports mode to stiffen everything up. I'm gonna go manual. Oh, <laughs> it increases the sound. The car makes not keen on that noise to tell you the truth. I am keen on the way this goes around corners though. Oh my gosh, those active anti-roll bars on this car just stop it leaning in the bends. Normally the five series would be leaning through some of the faster bends, but with this system on this particular model, not at all, and it's got so much grip from that four-wheel drive system. And that engine, <laughs> this thing is bonkers. It absolutely flies. The only thing that this car's lacking is a bit of steering feel. That's it. Do you know what? I'm not sure whether you need an M5. Why do you need an M5? This thing is quick enough. It grips well enough. It corners well enough. It doesn't bounce around as much as the M5 on our crappy British roads. This is a great car. This is a really, really great car. So then, what's my final verdict on the BMW 5 Series? Should you avoid it? Should you consider it? Should you shortlist it? Or should you just go right ahead and buy it? Well, I reckon you should shortlist the 5 Series. It's not completely perfect, but it is still a very good all-round large luxury car. If you enjoyed the video, please give it a like. Also, comment below of any kind of other videos you'd like us to do. If you want to watch some more videos, click on the windows there. And if you click on the box, you can download the CarWow app. It's completely free. You can use it to like browse all our reviews and see how much money we can save you on a new car. On average, we can save £3,600. That's right. Also, it has a special number plate reader, so you can scan any car's number plate and it'll tell you how much that car is currently worth. Download it. It's completely free.